All right. Um, this work? Can you guys hear me? All right. I'm going to use this. <clears throat> okay. So, yeah, Spun launched last week. Uh, it's been a really great week. Um, we worked with Apple for the last four or five months um, to develop this interface, which I'm going to show you guys in a minute. And uh, for all of our hard work, we ended up as a new and noteworthy app. Um, and we're in the news category, so you should all check it out. It's called Spun. Uh, it's actually listed in the App Store as Spun City News, so you know it's news. Um, and uh, yeah, we've been doing great. We've got about 99 reviews right now. We have a perfect five-star rating, so it seems like people are happy with what we're up to. Um, so real quick, um, who here is interested in stuff going on in New York and Brooklyn? How many people here have a chance to go to 200 different websites every day uh, to read about what's going on? All right, so needless to say, the target audience is large. Um, basically, we saw this huge gap. We see all these different news aggregators out there. We also see over the last 30 years things like the Alt Weekly, these lifestyle magazines that young people like myself um, kind of use to cultivate their identity have all atomized, right? And they've flown all over the internet. Um, things like the Village Voice and other kind of um, real lifestyle and culture oriented magazines. So now you've got these thousands of different blogs and they're all publishing stuff, but the problem is discovery, right? Finding the best stuff about your city. How do you actually keep tabs on what's going on in a really entertaining and engaging way uh, when you don't have time, right? You can probably go to about six different websites on a regular basis. So you're never going to find this stuff, but it is out there. So we thought, let's bring it all together and let's create something that is specifically mobile. And the reason for that is because we're seeing about... 30 to 35 percent of all internet, uh, all media consumption rather, happening on mobile devices. This is something that uh, I was just talking with Pete Cashmore from Mashable. They just launched a brand new version of Mashable. It's all responsive design because they see 35 percent of their traffic now on mobile devices. It was about three percent two years ago. Um, same thing with our partners at Hearst. They're seeing about the same numbers. So the question is, what can these devices do that computers didn't do in terms of helping you source content? Well, they're certainly location aware. And we've been promised that they're very magical, right? So things are just going to happen for us magically on these devices, and life is going to be wonderful. Um, so the question then is, how do we surface the content? Well, we figured, let's create something intimate, because these are also intimate devices, right? People treat their home screens the same way a teenager would treat the posters on the wall of their bedroom. Um, you really just put things there that, that reflect your identity and customize your experience. So we said, all right, let's shard it off by city. Let's make a really intimate local lifestyle magazine that pulls in only the best stuff, hand curated from hundreds of sources, so we can pick from thousands of stories every day. And right now we're live in 11 cities. Now, Apple said something very particular to us. They said, when a user launches the app, no matter what, you have to tickle the basal ganglia, which we thought was sounded gross. But um, Basically, it means you have to hit the pleasure center of the brain. And anyone who's ever used an Apple device knows that delight is the number one thing that they want you to experience. And the reason for that is because if you're going to try to get someone to engage with an application over and over again, and I actually think Aggregift, you guys do an awesome job of making it look good and feel good to go through the process, especially the little speech bubble that comes up on the hover. Um, that stuff is really important because um, it makes people feel successful when they use an application. So. We're going to do a little test of Verizon's LTE network right now. As you can see, it's very powerful here. And we're going to launch Spun. So right now, it's locating where I am. It's determining I'm in New York. And it's loading this uh, prism, um, or we like to call it the cube. And so because it spins in, you, you know it's a cube. And then you can play with it. Um, Basically, it is a lifestyle magazine. We've got top stories, which is a blend of uh, all the best stuff on the app, plus breaking news. It's all about NYC. You can see it up there in the top left. Uh, we've got other categories. We've got lifestyle. We've got food and drink. We've got arts and entertainment. Um, and that's it. We want to keep it really, really, really simple. Um, you spin the thing around. You scroll. And you can see here, it's this kind of little conveyor belt action. And when you see something that you like, for example, let me go to food and drink, because I like food. How about this? OK, New York food events for the weekend and beyond. You tap it. You get this nice little sound. And then it loads it up. Now, we're pulling this from Serious Eats. Um, everything that you see in the app, if it's in a readability view like this, where it's nicely formatted for your phone, 
That's because it's coming from a full RSS feed, which of course stands for really simple syndication. It means it's there for us to publish. Um, we put a link back to the original publisher. We credit the original publisher, as you can see at the top. Um, but the key is they're making it available for us to publish. And so we're creating better discovery for their content. Now, in the case that they don't have a full RSS, we uh, load a mobile web view, which gives them their page load and comes with their advertising. It's a way that we can kind of make good with publishers and present their material the way they've already said we can present it. Now, if you're interested in how that works, Rick, you can raise your hand. Rick Manji um, did all the back end architecting for the CMS which is something you won't see here, but our editors see every day. Um, so we've got four editors running 11 cities right now, and uh, they only pick the best stuff. It's a combination of seeing what's already hot on social networks, because we see social metrics, what headlines are good, and also good old editorial judgment. So when I'm reading this article, what you're going to see is there's a lot of stuff in here. right? This is stuff to do this weekend. So as I read, if you watch the map, it follows me around. So everything that I'm reading about is now, a connection is made. So we have a kind of spatialization of New York, and then we have content and information. And we're trying to bring these things together. You know, the same way that companies like Google have recently bought travel companies like Frommers. No one ever probably thought they were going to do that. Um, or companies like Zagat, or the way that Apple, with their new maps, as they strive to make the, the data better, um, has partnered with TomTom Tom and with Yelp. There is a huge rush for spatializing content. Now remember, there's not going to be anything in the world for you to see through your Google glasses when you finally buy them unless somebody maps the stuff. You know, for 20 years, we've said the world is our inspiration and the web is the place that we're going to put our version of the world. Now we're saying it's time to spin the web back into the world for mobile discovery. And the last thing I want to tell you guys, and then we're going to open it up to Q&A because I'm getting the one minute mark, is this. When I hit this little heart button, not only do I get a wonderful sound, but it saves it for later. I can read it offline. It syndicates it to my Facebook activity feed, which gives a link back to the original publisher so we can refer traffic. And it saves the location of every single thing mentioned in this article. And you can see there are many. So when I pop out of the train in lower Manhattan, even if it's a year from now, right, or two days from now in the case of this is for about the weekend, I'm going to get a push that says, remember that thing you read on C about, by Serious Eats on Spun? Well, you're right near a place that it's referencing. So it's saying to you, something in your city is hiding in plain sight, but I'm your best friend, and I've heard everything you've said is really interesting, and I'm going to let you know when that stuff is near you. If it's an event, we'll let you know when it's happening. So it's super simple. If you want to go back to the cube, you can. If you want to travel and you want to go to San Francisco, you can do that too. There you go, it all fades in. And we're in 11 cities. We're launching an iPad app first quarter next year. We're going to hopefully raise a B round if our user numbers are good enough. And uh, an update was submitted to the App Store today. So let's open it up to questions. Yes. Um, check, check, that works. Um, OK, so I'm just going to put this up here because we're very proud of this. We're uh, new and noteworthy. OK, that guy. How do you make money? How do we make money? Anyone? I don't know. Rick? Um, OK, there's a couple ways that we make money. Um, the first way uh, is um, not right now. But <laughs> it's very important. Everyone get that? Not right now. Um, no, when we had our previous company, we ran it in beta. It was also about publishing to place. We made about $2.36 annually per user without really aggressively pursuing partnerships. The way we did that was through featured placement. The key with Spun is we want to create something that's always about content discovery. That's the key, right, is allowing you to find things that you would never normally find that are very satisfying. Now, if that means that the week of the Tribeca Film Festival, an article about the Tribeca Film Festival, which is totally relevant to you, needs to be at the top of the feed, and Amex, who's the charter sponsor, is willing to foot the bill for that, we're very happy to take their money. So the bottom line is, when you look at models like Thrillist, they have done incredible business just by having paid placement of actual editorial content that happens to mention a flash sale right, um, in the fashion world. We're going to be doing a very similar thing, and we've already seen the model work, and we see other companies doing it very, very well. Um, additionally, when we partner with publishers, we can charge for a featured placement 
And if they don't have a sponsor, we can allow them, of course, to do ad impressions within the article as long as we deem it reasonable and set up some visual standards for that. Anyone else? Yeah, in the back with the beer. I really love this. When can I get it on my Android? <laughs> yes, that's a good question. So um, there's a couple things. There's a lot embedded in that question. And I answer that question every time I talk about this thing. One is we worked with Apple for about five months to develop this. Um, what that means is we're going to hitch our wagon to iOS for at least a little longer to see if we can end up where the New York Times is up there. Um, and that's a real possibility for us. Now, that's great, right? That's a business decision. But um, the reality is developing for Android is also very difficult. As many of you know, there's hundreds of handsets. And despite the fact that they may have 50% of the market share overall, if you're talking about realistically developing a stable product for one or two HD resolution handsets, you're talking about a pretty small market. And you can't develop for all of them. Now that said, you've got an Android and I want you to be a Spun user. So I gave two guys a small equity stake and said, just wait until we put out our iPad app and then we can talk about developing this app. So they're ready to do it. It's all going to use Rick's backend technology, so it's just a question of creating an Android wrapper. Uh, the short answer is maybe next year. Um, that guy. Um, for the benefit of the iOS developers in the room, can you talk a bit more about what you mean by work with Apple? Yes. It, ba it means, so there's this, um, you, you know, uh, have you ever seen All the President's Men? You know that guy Deep Throat is in the shadows? It's exactly like that. Um, it's also a little bit like the myth of Sleepy Hollow. But, um, but that's, that's weird. But um, basically, uh, the way it worked for us is we had an observer on our board. We have a partnership with Hearst. Um, we're going to be putting out, and if for anyone who's a journalist here, please don't write this, but um, if you're planning on blogging or anything like that, or tweeting, no tweeting, uh, we're going to be doing some work with the History Channel and Biography Channel very soon. And uh, one of our observers said, hey, this is interesting. You should meet with a developer rep out in Cupertino. Um, we told them we were going to be out there, and then we bought plane tickets. And we went and had a meeting, and he said, you know, listen, um, you know, working with Apple is not a marketing plan. Uh, working with Apple doesn't guarantee you anything. And working with us is a choice you make, and we believe you shouldn't be sacrificing time for quality. So if you want to get feedback from us, we're happy to give it. Um, but just know that it's just for your benefit of making a better app. And uh, they have a lot of very particular ideas. You know, Everything that is on iOS, they believe should court a gesture, which means it should feel like something that's touchable, which in the most extreme case means skeuomorphism, but in the most basic case just means no flat colors, no square corners, all of these different things. Because they believe anything that feels like the web feels like you should click it, and you can't click anything on an iPhone. You have to touch it. So they were very, very adamant about creating that. And what we took that to mean is make a real object that you can move in space. If you understand it's an object, you understand you have to move it. You know, the internet's not an object, right? It's a screen. Um, but yeah, but, but uh, Spun hopefully feels like an object. Um, so working with Apple just meant getting consultation uh, and continuing to build a relationship. And we hope benefit the company um, in the long run. One more. Who's got the best question? You sh no? You guys want to? Yeah? Which one? Wait, what the audience chooses. Who is it going to be? That guy. All right. See, there's something to be said for ineffable presence. Um, yeah. All right. So I'm curious why there's no mechanism to like share stories socially or... Ah. Yeah, I, um, it's an excellent question because I didn't show it. Um, <laughs> ah, so w one thing, when I favorite this story, it syndicates to my Facebook activity feed a la Spotify, right? Um, very similar. If I tap the only other button besides that button, I get my share screen, Facebook, Twitter, email, no problem. Uh, from email, you can get a shortened link, of course. Uh, we would like to encourage sharing. Sharing is good for us. Um, a lot of people also ask, dovetailing with that question, um, will it be more social in the future, or why doesn't it do 20,000 other things? Um, the reason for that is I did, and I'll be very brief on this, uh, I studied very briefly with a guy from Stanford named BJ Fogg, F-O-G-G. If you don't know him and you do UX design, you should look him up. Uh, he applies behavioral psychology principles and positive reinforcement training to app design. 
uh, and design in general. And the bottom line is, um, everything that happens uh, should be very simple. It should be a tiny machine and the user should never be able to do anything that results in them feeling incorrect. So soon we will be building in more and more social features like what are all my friends reading? But the reality of the situation is until all my friends are on Spun, download the app, that is an excellent way for the user to feel like they're failing. Because if they see that their friends are reading nothing, even if it's their own fault, it doesn't matter. It means that we're going to lose them as a user. Um, so just like they tell all the presidents in the debates, you know, that you have to ask for the vote, right? Or else they won't actually vote for you. You have to, at the end, you have to say, that's why I'm asking for your vote. So I'm asking you to download the app. Um, it's good. It's actually very useful per our poll at the beginning. Uh, and it's very well reviewed. So um, don't take my word for it. Uh, I guess that's it. Thanks to Jay and Jay and AgriGift. I'm going to um, gift my girlfriend something for Christmas. And hopefully you all read the local news on Spun. Thanks. <laughs>